The European Launcher Challenge of the European Space Agency is a groundbreaking initiative designed to revolutionize Europe's access to space. It aims to promote new competition and reduce dependence on established providers such as Ariane Space and other international players. Imagine Europe launching its own SpaceX era with innovative startups developing cost-effective, environmentally friendly rockets and making the continent more independent. Optimistically, this could lower the costs for launches and make space travel accessible to everyone. But does this vision hold up to reality? Let's take a closer look at the framework, the goals and the exciting players. My name is Serwin and this is Mars Chronicles. Shall we take off? The main goal of the challenge is to stimulate competition among European launch providers, to create a diverse ecosystem for access to space and to encourage innovative, cost-efficient solutions. For over four decades, the European Space Agency has secured Europe's autonomous space program with Ariane and Vega. But the market is growing rapidly and demands more variety to reduce costs and strengthen autonomy. We saw it in the United States and in Europe, it was exactly the same. The dependence of a sovereign on a single provider in any area sooner or later means that the quality will decline. The price rises and the customer, in this case the taxpayer, pays the price. In other words, the United States and Europe learned the hard way that they had become victims of monopolists who grew a little too comfortable. Think of Icarus. The challenge is meant to develop small and medium launches that can carry payloads of a few hundred kilograms into low Earth or polar orbits, with a focus on commercial providers from European Space Agency or European Union member states, launching exclusively from European soil. The start of a journey, Europe's man on the moon moment. Yes, Europe has spaceports. Apart from French Guiana in South America, which is French territory, there is also Kiruna in Sweden, Saxavord in the United Kingdom, and Andoya in Norway. The timeline is ambitious. In November 2023, the European Space Agency Council announced the challenge in Seville. In June 2024, a so-called request for information was issued to potential applicants. Since March 2025, the challenge has been open for applications. A few weeks ago, in the summer of 2025, the five applicants were selected. We'll take a closer look at them in a moment. In November 2025, the European Space Agency Council of Ministers will decide on funding. Framework contracts will be signed starting in 2026. By 2027, at the latest, each challenger must demonstrate a successful orbital launch. By 2028, a capacity upgrade demo will follow, and by 2030, the European Space Agency missions are expected to launch using these services. Up to 169 million per challenger are at stake. Overall, this is a significant boost for the industry. In total, up to 845 million euros could be paid out. However, this is not entirely certain yet, as it depends on several factors. This includes launch services for the European Space Agency missions, where the agency covers up to 25% of the price and co-financing for the upgrade demo with at least 40% private participation. The challengers can win not only money, but also European Space Agency as a customer, which brings stability and growth, plus prestige through demonstrations that open up the market. The European Space Agency is changing its role here from design authority to pure customer. The competition encourages progress without requirements. By the way, if you would like to have such and other news from space travel sent directly to your inbox, then register now for free for the brand new Mars Chronicles newsletter at Mars Chroniken. Space link can of course be found below in the description. The 845 million sound like a lot of money. But if you compare that with the amounts that an Ariane group required to further develop the Ariane 5, uh, to develop the Ariane 6, one thing becomes clear, something does not quite add up. The Ariane 6, with everything included, cost about 5 billion euros. With this money, which was mostly paid by the European Space Agency member states, 
The European Space Agency not only didn't acquire a single mission, but also has to subsidize every launch during ongoing operations. Even if the Ariane 6 launches Kuiper satellites for Jeff Bezos, I don't understand why my tax money should be used to subsidize a Musk or a Bezos. But that's just the reality we live in. And needless to say, the European Space Agency has no share in the money earned. On the other hand, the European Space Agency can secure five launch providers who are more than happy to get a few crumbs. Not to mention that the providers have much greater incentives to work cost efficiently and sustainably while maintaining high quality. It is true that the Ariane 6 is a heavy lift rocket and our five challengers are smaller. But even the larger rockets will come from these providers in the future. To remain relevant here, Ariane Group made a brilliant strategic move by founding Maya Space as a subsidiary. More on that later. Five challengers have been pre-selected and are now negotiating funding with their governments for the Ministerial Council in November. At the end of the day, the countries of origin must foot the bill. Each one brings unique technology and business models focused on small satellite launches. Let's go through the applicants, starting with the most advanced ones. The European Space Agency Aerospace from Germany is developing the Spectrum rocket, a two-stage launcher that is 28 meters high and two meters in diameter. It can carry up to one metric ton into low Earth orbit or 700 kilograms into sun-synchronous orbits powered by nine Akula engines using propane and liquid oxygen. The European Space Agency has raised over 550 million euros, including 165 million in a Series C round in 2023. They have very strong financial and industrial backing and they are aiming for high framework performance. The European Space Agency's first launch attempt in March 2025 from Andoya in Norway ended after half a minute, but provided valuable data. The European Space Agency seems very satisfied with the result and they are working towards the second flight. They also have an agreement with the French Space Agency Center National d'Etudes Spatiales to rebuild the old Diamant platform in French Guiana. The next attempt is planned for the end of the year 2025. With more than 80% in-house production, the European Space Agency is aiming for cost-efficient mass manufacturing. But the question remains whether they can master the time pressure. I had the chance to visit European Space Agency Aerospace in their production halls near Munich, which was an awesome experience. The video about it is linked below. Maya Space from France, the subsidiary of the Ariane Group, is building the Maya rocket, a partially reusable launcher of 50 meters in height, which in expendable mode can lift up to one and a half tons into sun-synchronous orbits. Powered by Prometheus engines using methane and liquid oxygen, the booster is supposed to land on an offshore platform. The funding amounts to 125 million euros from the parent company Ariane Group. The first launch is planned for the year 2026 from Kourou. As an established player, Maya Space naturally benefits from Ariane's expertise. But is this connection competition or reinforcement of a monopoly? The Ariane Group realized that as a large, sluggish company, they needed to found an agile subsidiary in order to move forward. In a few years, we'll know how effective this move has been. The rocket factory Augsburg, also from Germany, presents RFA-1, a three-stage launcher of 30 meters in height and 2 meters in diameter, which can bring up to 1.3 tons into sun-synchronous orbits. With nine helix engines in the first stage burning kerosene and oxygen, the rocket factory Augsburg relies on industrialization for low costs. So basically the exact opposite of the European Space Agency philosophy. They outsource as much as possible to specialize external manufacturers from the automobile and aerospace industry. So far, they have raised something in the range of 100 million euros. They already have many successful engine tests to show, but a test stand explosion in the year 2023 delayed everything. They have their test facilities in Kiruna, but they launch from SAC support. The first launch is supposed to be carried out still in the year 2025. They also have an agreement with the Centre National d'Etudes Spatiales for Kourou in French Guiana. 
PLD Space from Spain is developing Miura 5, a 34 meter high launcher that can lift up to one ton into low Earth orbit or 540 kilograms into Sun synchronous orbits. Miura 5 uses five Tiepril C engines burning kerosene and oxygen, and being partially reusable, it aims for cost efficiency. Their funding exceeds 160 million euros, but they have taken on half of their cash in the form of loans. PLD also has a deal with the Centre National d'Etudes Spatiales for a launch facility in Kourou. In the year 2023, they successfully launched their suborbital Mura 1 rocket. In addition, they have engine tests and an industrialization plan for 32 units until the year 2030 to show. Mura 5 may launch from French Guiana in 2026. Are they already talking publicly about their future plans? Miura Next is designed as a medium lift rocket and is supposed to expand the portfolio. PLD's mix of private and startup elements makes them resilient, but the high level of debt increases the pressure. Orbex from the United Kingdom is building the Prime rocket, a 19 meter high micro launcher that can lift up to 180 kilograms into low Earth orbit or 150 kilograms into sun synchronous orbits. Powered by seven three-dimensional printed engines that use biopropane and liquid oxygen as environmentally friendly propellant. The company places great importance on sustainability, which is reflected in the choice of renewable propellants and efficient production methods. They are planning with Proxima a medium lift upgrade that is supposed to significantly expand capacities to better meet European Space Agency requirements. Milestones include the full-scale prototype in the year 2022 and the change of the launch facility to Saxeford Spaceport on the Shetland Islands. And in the year 2025, the maiden flight is still supposed to happen. I'm curious to see what happens. Since its founding, Orbex has raised about 150 million euros in funding. But that's not enough for their ambitious plans, and being selected by the European Space Agency could be a life-saving financial boost that keeps the company from failing. Despite the focus on leadership changes, educational initiatives and conferences, there has been only sparse information about the rocket's development status for years. Which makes the first orbital flight seem at least a year away. The European Space Agency's choice of Orbex instead of competitors like High Impulse from Germany or Latitude from France ensures geographical diversity in the challenge and could encourage the British government to increase its contributions. But delays are testing patience and raising questions about whether Orbex can handle the time pressure. These five challengers, European Space Agency, Maya Space, Rocket Factory, Augsburg PLD and Orbex represent Europe's new wave. Small rockets for small satellites built in European Space Agency member states launched from European soil. By the year 2027, Orbital, 2028 Upgrade and 2030 European Space Agency missions. A tight plan? I like this approach. With 169 million per company, this could diversify Europe's launch market and reduce costs. But is the funding enough to stand up to global giants? Or will technical hurdles delay everything? The diversity is inspiring, but competition among Europeans could lead to fragmentation. Considering the rapidly growing sector, however, it is important to have strong players. In the past, it has been shown that such subsidies and institutions as anchor customers are not the rescue per se, but rather the security for private investors to provide the right amounts of money. If you enjoyed this analysis of the European Launcher Challenge, subscribe to Mars Chronicles and leave a thumbs up. A huge thank you goes out to all channel members and patron supporters. If you want to become part of the community as well, you can find all the information below in the video description. My name is Sirwan and this was Mars Chronicles. Thank you for tuning in per Aspera Ad Astra.